I love games. But while I love games as much as Todd Howard loves not shutting his stupid idiot mouth, money tends to avoid me like MRIs avoid the shower, and as such, big releases, shiny new consoles, and good PCs elude me. So, to that end, I have to keep my expenses on games cheap. And one way to do that is, uh, well I can't say it because it might end in a trip to the big house, but to cover my ass legally, I'm going to end this sentence with the word ALLEGEDLY. I allegedly pirated thousands of pounds of old software over, over the course of 20 years. Allegedly. However, if you feel like not being a complete evildon and want to put some food on people's tables, you can look at indie gaming. Indie games are always cheap and are sometimes, but not all of the time, better than their AAA equivalent. So that's what this series is going to be about. Looking at those indie games. Join me as I look through the world of indie games and prepare to go Indie Deep. Platformers are arguably the quintessential game genre. If you ask any old Joe Blogs off the street what comes to mind when you ask them about games, they're either going to say Mario or Sonic. Camera Obscura comes from that same school of thought, where you go from point A to B by dodging enemies and making jumps. Standard stuff, but the key difference here is that you can create your own platforms. Let me explain. Your character is equipped with a camera, and hitting the B button on a gamepad creates a duplicate image of whatever landscape is on screen. Unlike the land you walk on, this duplicate image isn't solid, but will become so after a few seconds, so you have time to get into position, allow the duplicate image to become solid, and use your new platform to get where you need to go. Do you ever think that the good ideas in games are all taken, and now we're left with the complex, ridiculous, the ridiculously complex, and the complexly ridiculous? The concept of this game is a bit of a head-scratcher in theory, but it completely works in practice, as an instinctive thing. You'll be able to create platforms and traverse gaps without even thinking about it. But try explaining it. You have no chance. I barely scraped by there now, and to be honest, I've even confused myself in the process. Camera Obscura puts you in the shoes of a girl with a camera who loves to take pictures, and she ventures out to a big archaic tower to find... Uh, answers. What kind of answers? Well, the game's kind of sketchy on that part, but frankly, it doesn't matter. It's all set up for you to make your way from point A to B of the map. So the game, by this reckoning, is a puzzle platformer, so let's tackle the first side of that coin to begin with. The puzzles in this game are pretty charming, if frustrating in a kind of, this is way too early in the morning for this sorcery kind of thing. You have to use the after image that the camera creates to get from point A to point B, which was previously unaccessible. So much of the puzzle solving will mean taking a picture, putting your after image in position, waiting for it to set, and running as fast as possible before the thing fades away. As it stands, this is a pretty cool concept, as it challenges you to think of the best way to clear a particularly daunting section, but more importantly, this injects life into the game. There's a genuine sense of panic and haste as you try to get to safe ground, being fully aware that you're on borrowed milliseconds, and it's at this level of thrill that really makes the game worth your time. The platforming is unlikely to set the world on fire though. It's hardly complex as it is, you hold right and jump when you need to. It's unlikely to challenge anyone with a brain stem, but maybe that's for the best. This part of the game is as inoffensive, functional and unnoticeable as possible, so as not to interfere with the real meat of the game, the picture taking element. After all, it's right there in the, in the title. One could make the case that, oh, the platforming just isn't a challenge, which is completely right, but it's only a half point. In actuality, the running, jumping, etc, etc, all take a back seat to put shine on the picture taking, which only helped to make the game stand out above the sea of indie games already available out there. Perhaps the worst, although I shouldn't say bad as it isn't shoddily designed, just blood curdlingly annoying, are the prevalence of enemies. They appear mostly in the form of amorphous blue blobs, kind of like the flans from Final Fantasy, but a little cuter, and they're the most annoying little sods I've ever come across in an indie game, because they just won't go away. They're like Homer in that Simpsons episode, Homer Loves Flanders, because whenever you turn around, there they are. They seem to always sneak up on you when you're either trying to make a jump or safe landing, coming into contact in the agonising seconds when you're waiting for that after image to develop. 
This isn't necessarily a bad feature of the gameplay, not at all, but I guarantee you will grow to hate these hateful and interfering flan men. Happily, however, you can crush them to death using your after image. <laughs> Wrapping up with everything, I'll give a little bit of comment on the game's aesthetic. Now I hate to say this because the camera idea makes the game fairly unique, but the game's graphics just aren't that impressive. The pixel art style is normally a safe bet for any indie game because it's easily made and cheap to produce, especially when your dev team is in the single figures, but here it's unsuccessful as camera obscura just ends up looking muddy and unclear. Not ugly by any means, but missing a bit of visual clarity that would have helped the game overall. The game's preference uh, for muted colours like browns and greys doesn't help matters. It fits the overall tone that you're journeying through a high tower, promoting the sense of feeling lost, like it's literally you, a small girl in your camera, against this big and mighty tower, get your heads out of the gutter this instant, and it works on that level. But purely superficially, it just doesn't look that great. Thankfully, the soundtrack, while sparse, there's about two tracks, and that's your lot, are these really chilled out and yet creepy ambient pieces that help you think, but also unnerve, and that just fits the whole package brilliantly. So as such, Camera Obscura is a neat, fun and tidy little indie game with immensely satisfying puzzles that totally live up to the asking price. The Steam RRP is usually 79p or $1.99, which is a steal, but it usually goes on sale for up to half of that price, and to be honest, you'd have to be certifiable to miss this game at that price. It's a sweet little game that delivers for the money. Not perfect by any means, but still enjoyable enough to tax you. As such, my final verdict on this game is a solid 2 and 3 quarter stars. Check this one out. That's all from me today. Join us next time when we'll be scouring the depths of what indie games have to offer as we go indie deep. Thanks for watching and good night.